Chat's here. Chat's here. Chat's functional. Chat's going. Chat's moving. Chat's grooving. Chat time. Chat's here. Chat's moving. Chat's grooving, like I said. Uh, sorry about that. Chat's going now. Here we go. Cool. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Yes, Ka Kanye hacked me. Ka Kanye hacked my chat. Kept my chat from mu from moving. <laughs> he almost uh, he almost had me. Kanye almost had me in this in this moment. Just a just a smidge. There we go. That's good. That's better better framing of my melon. I think. All right. Um, here we go. We're recording. Cool. 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 Hey, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. Looks like a lot of you turned up for the drama. This is officially a drama channel. This is officially a drama stream. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught it, you know, because there was a lot of stuff going on over this past weekend. The Super Bowl, namely uh, the halftime show, maybe something in your own personal life that you needed to take care of. But simultaneously in the midst of all of this, uh, Kanye was completely melting down on Instagram, which he has continued to do so. I, I believe he's even made posts today, which we will uh, go through. I've got a majority of the posts that have been getting thrown up on the internet here. We're going to go over all of them and kind of talk about it. I want to know right off the bat, uh, before we get into this, like, how much are you guys buying into all of this in terms of like, how real or serious you think all of it is? Do you think everything is on the up and up? Thank you for the sub. Do you think everybody's like, you know, uh, being honest here, do you think this is like some sincere emotions and drama going on, or do you think this is maybe a little played up uh, for attention, for clicks, for hype, for Donda attention? Is it totally trolling? Is it totally real? Like, how, how much do you buy into this whole rigmarole? Uh, dude's being honest because he's delusional. It's just album hype, bro, trolling. Uh, yay out of his mind. <laughs> Uh, probably 80% real. Da, 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 da. Okay, so it, 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 seem, it seems like a mix. Julia just broke up with him. Yeah, the, the Julia did, the, the, him, and, him and Julia did separate, which I mean, that was bound to fucking happen. Like nobody saw Julia Fox and was like, yeah, that's going to last. Um, so I mean, that's, that's actually not surprising at all. Um, not surprised at all that Kanye and Julia Fox didn't last because honestly, like looking at Julia Fox, I, I don't really see too much in common between both of them in terms of like their vibe, their aesthetic just kind of seemed like it wasn't really going to go anywhere. Uh, but that, you know, it was just a prediction that I was right in, but honestly, it's like, I, I don't really know either of them personally. So it's not, it's not a call that you really want to make and you don't want to, you know, wish uh, ill on somebody's new relationship. You know, it's not just a, it's just not tasteful, but um, look, uh, we're going to go over this drama that's uh, been ongoing with Kanye with Ye on his uh, Instagram. It all started with this, really at the start of the weekend, with Kanye announcing, written out, on notebook paper, uh, just so everyone knows, Cuddy will not be on Donda because he's friends with you-know-who. We all speak in Billy language now, and you-know-who. Uh, many did not know who, but uh, you know, as, as the weekend unfolded, it was very clear that uh, you-know-who was, in fact, Pete Davidson. So you know who is Pete. We're not allowed to talk about Pete because Pete is Voldemort. And, uh, you know, Pete, Pete is Kim's new guy. And we do not want to talk about Pete because Pete is drama. Now, moving on from there, we have uh, a lot of responses to this Kanye post. A lot of responses. A lot of, uh, you know, hangers on, sucking up to him, just being like, oh, you're the best, Kanye. I love you so much. You're my hero. La, la, la. Uh, but there was one choice response that uh, I, I would say is the most important uh, to all of these responses. Uh, Kid Cudi himself saying, too bad. I don't want to be in your album, you fucking dinosaur. <laughs> Everyone knows I've been the best thing about your album since I met you. I'm a prey for you, brother. Wow. Kid Cudi uh, kind of taking the high road here. I mean, as, as much as like we enjoy Kanye's music, we respect Kanye's craft like effectively Kid Cudi has done nothing wrong in this situation. Like even the most hardcore Kanye fan cannot tell me Cudi has done anything wrong. Cudi has not done anything wrong. Cudi hasn't done anything wrong. Kanye will go on to argue like he's friends with Pete. Skeet. 
I'm trying to get my family back. He's friends with Skeet. Da, 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 da. But like, come on. Everybody in this fucking circle, this shit circle, is a celebrity. Like, Kid Cudi, Pete Davidson, are they like besties? Are they having sleepovers? Are they flirting with each other over text? Are they going out to the movies together? I mean, I'm sure they're genuinely friendly. But like, are they so close emotionally? Like, are, are they somehow closer together emotionally than Kanye and Cuddy are at this point? Two frequent artistic collaborators, two people who in the music industry are like, you know, attached at the hip in the eyes of most fans and people. Are, are like, is Kid Cuddy's proximity to Pete Davidson really that much of a threat to Kanye? It kind of just seems silly and overplayed. You know, what, what I think this is really about is like, Cuddy won't start drama with Pete publicly in the same way that Kanye is. And because of that, Kanye's got to push away. And again, even the most hardcore Kanye Stan cannot tell me that Cuddy has done anything wrong here. He's not doing, he's not done anything wrong. He has not done anything wrong. He's just not doing exactly what Kanye wants to do. So of course, Kanye's pushing him away and it's ugly. It's bad. It's a bad look. It's a bad move. It's not cool. Like no matter what you're doing, Kid Cuddy's kind of a guy that you want on your side. You don't want to push Kid Cuddy away. Talented guy, stable head on his shoulders, one of the most consistent and beloved artists and influential artists in the music industry. Chances are, if you're pushing Kid Cudi away, you're not making the best move. And that's just off the bat here. There's a lot more to go through. So let's continue here. Uh, we have... Kanye kind of digging deeper into the drama, uh, posting, you know, Pete Davidson, Ariana Grande, kind of bringing Mac Miller's memory into the whole thing. Like, remember Pete Davidson started dating Ariana after Mac Miller and he was a part of that whole drama and like kind of dragging his name through the mud that way. Going deeper into this, we have a uh, trust Jesus because, you know, for Kanye, like all of this is in the name of God. Like we're trusting God. We're trusting Jesus right now. We're holding faith and faith is driving us to just like shit post endlessly uh, on Instagram for the whole weekend. That's 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 trusting Jesus. Um, <laughs> ch chances are the guy holding that sign uh, pro pro probably doesn't like uh, the LGBTQ community all that much <laughs> and shit like that. Uh, I, I wouldn't trust anyone holding a sign like that in public. I'll say that. All right. Moving on from there. <clears throat> We have Kanye, of course, like posting praise that he's getting over text. Like, yeah, Kanye, you're you're trending during the Super Bowl. People have no idea. Keep it going. You're shifting the paradigm, man. Like what what is the paradigm? God has a plan. It was God's plan for you to trend. <laughs> it was God's plan for you to trend on Super Bowl weekend. This is why I say when Kanye talks about spirituality and talks about God, this is not all the time. But, but it's a good deal of the time. When Kanye talks about God and talks about spirituality, what he does is he's not looking at the literal text of the Bible and then sort of dictating his life by it. He goes into spirituality or his concept of God with a preconceived notion of what is right or what he wants to do already in his head. And then he reverse engineers through spirituality, through Christianity, his own reasoning for justifying that in sort of like a, a, a godly headspace. So he just basically takes what he already wants to do and he just defines it as having something to do with God or having something to do with his spirituality. So it becomes kind of like a weird justification for what he already wants to like, you know, act like and behave like. It just becomes godly by virtue of him being a Christian, which it doesn't really work that way, but go on. Uh, we have him posting more text message conversations. He's like kind of breaking the matrix here. Oh, living in the Truman Show. You know, you're, you're just like uh, living and thinking outside of the box that we're somehow just all stuck in. Uh, you know, this is this is classic, like externalizing every single thing that you're doing and every problem that, are, that you're creating and putting it on the world that is surrounding you as opposed to taking responsibility for anything. Uh, we have from here a message attached to all of this. And, and these messages are incredibly interesting uh, in terms of like getting a sense of w what he's trying to communicate here and where some of the flaws in his logic are as well. Uh, he says, I didn't wake up and fight for my family to trend over the Super Bowl, but it happened. The Super Bowl brings families together. 
For everyone married, hold your spouse close. Make sure that they know how much you love and appreciate them because there's a skeet lurking in every dirty ass alley waiting to help destroy your family and walk around in Calvin Klein's around your children. I wish my wife was with me and our children sitting at the 50 yard line. Kim Kardashian, always remember West was your biggest W. All right. Um, again, like I don't know. I don't know if it's been public, like what proximity Pete has had to his children in the midst of him dating Kim Kardashian. Like does Kanye know firsthand that Pete is walking around the Kardashian house in his underwear around his kids? I mean, um, if if so odd, but if that's not true, if you don't know that for a fact, if that's merely just like a fear that you have and you're broadcasting it out there as if it's reality, it kind of just seems like a, a, a manipulation that you're you know putting upon your fans in order to get them like salivating and hating Pete Davidson and sort of like you know making it seem like he's some kind of like abuser or uh, some kind of you know weirdo who wants to uh, get in. Uh, I, I guess kind of like dirty sneaky style <laughs> with your ex in order to like, you know, be near your children again. It's it's like you're trying to put creepo vibes on him that aren't necessarily there unless you have some kind of proof or evidence of that. But it's just all kind of like weird insinuation uh, at this point. And, you know, I, I love how also he's kind of putting this on the magic of the Super Bowl too. like, hey, the Super Bowl brings families together. Um it, it's 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 really odd. There's like a lot of mythos and magic surrounding all of this, be it God, be it uh, the Super Bowl, the Internet making things trend. It's all just kind of serendipitous uh, for Kanye. All right. Moving on from there. We have again Kanye trending. This this is the uh, the post that that uh, rant was attached to. Uh, we have this one. Yeah, this was uh, what I just showed. All right. Moving on from there, we have him kind of reposting posts from other accounts. Namely, in this case, the shade room. Um, I don't know if I so much got uh, a lot out of this one outside of him just like, you know, shouting out the shade room for showing love and in a way supporting him. Uh, continuing on from there, he posts this photo of him proving uh, that his account is not being currently hacked right now, which like, bro, we know. Like, nobody on your account would be posting this fucking way other than you. <laughs> nobody in, in a million years would be posting on your Instagram account this erratically other than you. Like, on, like if, if somebody did manage to hack Kanye's account and was posting like this all weekend, I feel like that person would deserve an Academy Award because that would just be like, my God, the, just, just an Oscar-worthy performance, amazing performance. Like, dude... We knew from the jump, from the first post, this was you. This couldn't not this this couldn't have possibly been anybody else other than you. Um, we like, hey, thanks for the sub. Like, we we know it's you, man. No need to prove it. No need to like. W was anybody even questioning whether or not it was actually Kanye West posting everything he'd been posting over the weekend, pushing away Kid Cudi, so on and so forth? I, pretty sure it was you. No doubt it was you. I, I don't think anybody doubted it for a single second, that these were Kanye West posts. Uh, continuing on from there, though, <laughs> we have him uh, clowning Pete Davidson more. Th this is sort of like the clowning Pete Davidson streak. Uh, love this photo with uh, Machine Gun Kelly. This one's, uh, this one's quite funny. Um, digging on this one quite a bit. This one's uh, for, some, for some good laughs. He says, no, you will never meet my children, which like... <sighs> I mean, is is that is that your greatest fear with Pete Davidson? And, and, and is that what Pete Davidson is even interested in? Like, honestly, while I thought the uh, Kanye and Julia Fox thing wasn't really going to last, I, I don't really think the Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian thing is going to last either. Pete Davidson is like classic rebound guy. I think he kind of likes that element of his persona. I think he likes being the rebound guy. And if he makes it, you know, like permanent with Kim forever, he can't continue to be the rebound guy. Uh, maybe he's sort of maybe seeing his his age go up and he thinks maybe this could be like his last rebound. This is my biggest rebound. I'm never going to get a bigger rebound than this. 
<laughs> so maybe Pete actually will try to stick around, but I, I, I don't see a, a real long-term thing coming out of the Pete Davidson, Kim Kardashian thing either. Um, so I, maybe Kanye is a little too worried in this sense. I, I think Pete may be a seasonal thing that uh, Kim may get over in time. And then, you know, th there could be space to have a conversation after that. And in the meantime, um, I, I don't think Pete is desperate to be anybody's dad. You know, I, I think Pete is, you know, too busy being Pete, uh, most likely. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is, this is a pretty funny picture over here. Uh, clowning Pete Davidson, um, throwing up uh, this text message photo. I, I, I guess he has Pete's direct number. Uh, talking about how, you know, he'd never get in the way of your children, uh, raising his kids. He doesn't show the whole message and, you know, obscuring it, I think, is a, uh, partially the point. Um, going in deeper over here, putting up more movie posters. It's him versus Pete, Pete versus him, this team versus that team. Taylor Swift is on the other team. Billy's on the other team. <laughs> Travis Scott and Future are on my team. It's really fucking dramatic. It's really dramatic. I even saw one that somebody else posted where it was like Kanye as um, Harry Potter and, and Pete Davidson was Voldemort on the poster. Uh, this this one's really interesting because this is where like a bit of a political narrative comes up in a lot of these rants. So this is a tattoo that Pete Davidson has, which, mind you, really weird fucking tattoo. Like uh, of, of all the th of, of all the things to get a tattoo of. Hillary Clinton. <laughs> it it is a weird fucking tattoo. It is a cringe tattoo. Um, I you know th think this is a not exactly sick ink over here. Um, I, I don't have you know the greatest tattoos in the world or anything, but this is uh, most definitely not the the best one. But the thing is, like, not only is this cringe, but for Kanye, this like means something. This plays into a larger narrative. Like Kanye thinks that uh, as he continues to clown Pete over here, his fits, his fits suck. Uh, Pete's fits are, are cringe in this next photo over here. Pete does not have good fits, not, doesn't have good fashion sense, according to Kanye. There's some pretty cringe Kanye fits that we could throw up here if we wanted to. <laughs> but for sure, Pete Davidson, he, he does have some bad fits. Pete Davidson does have some bad fits. Uh, going on from there, look at this dickhead. I wonder if Instagram is going to shut down my page for dissing him. M most likely not. I think Instagram kind of likes uh, the, the money they're making off the drama, too. Uh, we have Kanye sort of bringing up Kid Cudi again. I would have never asked for the loyalty if it was never offered. Re really weird. This is like kind of Donald Trump level stuff. You know, looking not for friends that will check you, friends that will like be honest with you. Friends that will be real with you, friends that will guide you in a positive path. We're looking for friends who are loyal, friends who are loyal no matter what. doesn't matter what my vibe is, what my energy is, what I'm demanding. You got to be loyal. That's the most important thing to me. Buy into my mindset. Buy even into my delusions. You must be loyal. Loyalty above all else is kind of a, an, an equation for toxicity. So uh, uh, let's keep going. He says, and I found a cool picture because I love Cuddy and always will. But Donda 2 is about uh, running back in that burning house. And I respect uh, not everyone is going to be ready for the smoke. OK, well, you know, I, I hope that uh, they can move on from this point. But, uh, you know, I, I still think like the demand for loyalty, no matter what, is is just not great. Uh, moving on from there, we have him posting more pictures saying I'm very community oriented. I mean, it. If true, why push people away? Why push people away for not, uh, you know, just giving into whatever demand that you have at the drop of a hat? That's not really community because in a community, other people have say. And I kind of have a feeling when it comes to being in Kanye's world, there's not really much of a say. It's more like a cult than it is a community. <laughs> when you look at the people who are like riding his coattails and being like, oh, my God, you're so right. You're correct about everything. <sighs> Uh, he says, I love my friends, love my family. Uh, and that's the reason I asked Cuddy to at least speak to Skeet uh, is because for years, Cuddy always made it seem like it was him and me against everyone. And now that I'm fighting for my family, he's not by my side. This is bigger than music. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I, I don't think Cuddy necessarily sees, like, fighting for your family or getting back with your family. I, I, I don't think he sees fighting with Pete Davidson as, like, a road to getting there. You know, he, he might not see the logic in that because there's not a whole lot of logic in that, 
if we're being serious. And, you know, and, and to be totally serious, I, I am very serious right now. I'm being very serious right now. Um, to, to make this clear, as a child of divorce, I am a child of divorce. And not only am I a child of divorce, I, I was the child of a very ugly divorce, which involved a terrible custody battle. And, um, you know, no specifics that I'll get into, but uh, a lot of ugliness that built up to that point, which was absolutely nothing in comparison to what you're seeing here on the screen in front of you. But this was all pre-internet, obviously. Um, but the thing is, like, this kind of behavior, going at your ex, going at your ex's new guy, do, do, doing this, do, doing this— Posing threats as if, you know, I'll, I'll show you guys that later. It doesn't really create good outcomes. It doesn't create good outcomes in these very tense situations where if you are seeking joint custody, if you're seeking for the relationship to be mended, uh, if you're seeking for some kind of uh, amicable split where everything is just like even keel, whatever, uh, it's at that point. It's at that exact point in time. You want to be on your best behavior, not like Drake, your worst behavior. You want to be on your best behavior. You want to be a fucking Boy Scout. You want to be on your best behavior because it's at that point that anything that you do that is the least bit off or threatening or uh, unsettling could be working against you either in a court of law or some other context. You know, like, what is it about this behavior that Kanye thinks is going to win Kim back? Is he bending to any of her wishes? Is he doing anything that she requests? Like, it sort of seems like this isn't so much I'm going to do what's being asked of me or I'm going to come to some kind of uh, agreement or uh, the word I'm looking for is compromise. Uh, no, I'm going to just sort of like force my will upon the situation and God will just sort of make it happen for me as long as I keep pushing and as long as I keep shoving. But again, that's not really how it works when you're talking about other individual actors who have agency and the ability to make their own choices and do whatever the hell they want to do because they're adults who are in control of their own lives, too. Moving on from here. Hey, shout out to Yandi memes, man. Shout out to Yandi fucking memes. This post over here is, is not up anymore, uh, but Yandi Memes is a great meme account who posted this, uh, you know, section of Kanye West's uh, Instagram rants with an Eric Andre uh, reaction saying, uh, uh, what <laughs> the goddamn hell are you talking about? And Kanye posted this and actually responded with a whole screed uh, sort of saying, really like contextualizing and you know I don't want to go over like the previous thing I want to go over this because this is where Kanye really tries to like explain what he's talking about here and how he sees this whole situation given that he is serious because maybe he is maybe he's a little bit trolling but uh, so he says this is what it means Disney owns Hulu Disney wants to influence a wider age group Disney assigned the actor Skeet to serve in some bigger narrative, but for some reason refused to give a stylist. I wrote that last part intentionally to be funny. I joke while expressing my side just like SNL, which is also a, a gang with Disney. Uh, Bob bought Marvel and Disney to gain more influence in the teenage market. Ellen and Hillary been whispering in Kim's ear for years. Uh, Ski had been wearing fake Trump hats to ridicule me uh, for not being in my uh, black place as a voter and throwing shots about me uh, about at me about mental health. And he's a pawn. I'm not crazy. I wouldn't have had such a big impact on the culture for the past 20 years if I was. Uh, this is the real narrative. Everyone else is afraid. But now they played with my family and it's up. So that's what he that's what I'm guessing he thinks. OK, so let's go over this because this is a web. According to Kanye, this is a fucking web. So Pete Davidson is merely just a pawn, a pawn who has been placed in a place by Disney and sort of just like the the, the greater Disney Hulu SNL media apparatus to get in between him and his family. Meanwhile, meanwhile, on the on the back end, on the other side, um, people like Hillary Clinton are whispering in Kim's ear about 
what Kanye about like Trump about like don't don't like Trump don't like Trump don't like Kanye don't be with Kanye is Hillary Clinton casually calling Kim when, when are you going to break up with Ye Kim it's time time to give it up girl just break up with that Kanye West <laughs> he voted for Trump and he wore that MAGA hat Kim come on um so again, like really weird web going on here. And for Kanye, you, you could tell how burned he is about the MAGA shit, which at like this point, I don't even know if most of like even his hardcore fans think about the MAGA shit. Even the MAGA people have pretty much given up on caring about Kanye, not only because like he doesn't really kind of rep that train like he used to. Uh, but on top of that, like th 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 they kind of get infatuated with different things uh, over the course of the year. And Kanye is just kind of a topic I think they've mostly lost interest in. Like uh, some of them are mostly very pro Kanye, but anything having to do with Kanye and MAGA and so on and so forth, I, I think most people are not really hanging on to at this point. Uh, certainly not to the point where we're like, yeah, you wore that MAGA hat. You supported Trump. Well, five years from now. After a pandemic starts, we're going to make sure Pete Davidson, <laughs> Pete Davidson, of all people, like Pete Davidson, they've been training him like a fucking Manchurian candidate. But in, instead of an, an, an assassination, he just, you know, has sex instead with, with Kim Kardashian um, in order to split up Kanye's family. Like what? Um. You're laughing. It's the truth. It, it's it's the truth that Pete Davidson. Wh where's the documentation? Like wh what board meeting did Pete Davidson enter into? Or was like, Pete, now listen here, Pete. We know that you're just a, a mediocre SNL actor and comedian, but this is what you're going to do. <laughs> the moment Kanye West and Kim Kardashian split up, you're going to jump in there and you're going to date Kim Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> Like, huh? Pete's mission. <laughs> Pete's mission. If you're, this is your mission. If you choose to accept it, Pete Davidson. <laughs> um, yeah, this this is this is cringe. This is cringe. This is sad. This is unfortunate. Um, I appreciate that Kanye wants to be back with his family. Wants to be back in that father figure role. Wants to be back in the house. Wants to be back. Who who wouldn't want to be back with their family? If you love your family, you love your kids, so on and so forth. Who wouldn't? But like coming up with all of these, like, but 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 here's the thing. Kanye can't accept that there may possibly be a reason that he's not in that house right now that has to do with him. He can't. It's impossible. He's incapable of accepting that. So because of that, he needs to come up with this. He needs to come up with this because there cannot in his mind be a single reason that he's not in that house that has to do with him. This is his cope. And it's a sad one. <sighs> Moving on from there, uh, he has you know a picture of him and Kim. And he says, I don't have beef with Kim. I love my family. So stop that narrative. I'm not giving up on my family. I bought this coat for Kim before SNL. I thought it was particularly special. I have faith that we'll be back together. And I never had anything against Daily Mail. I got love for everyone in the media. And I wish you all the happiness in the world. I speak directly to the media outlets the same way a ball player speaks to the refs. Uh, the world is our court, like a basketball court and the court of public opinion. Uh, we have a public relationship because we are public figures. So to the public and to the press, sometimes people call me crazy, uh, but to be in love is to be crazy and something uh, about something, be crazy about something. Uh, sorry, I'm not the best reader in the world. And I'm crazy about my family. Happy Valentine's. Now, this is actually a, a, not one of the worst posts. It is a little love bomby. It is a little love bomby, to be honest. Uh, but this is not like, you know, one of the uh, worst posts here. Uh, for the most part, like if, if Kanye posted this and left it at this, I, I would say that's, you know, more or less agreeable. In, in a way, I even do see his point about, well, you know, we're in a public relationship. We're a public couple. 
Sure. I, I suppose, you know, there could be some spillage of drama uh, out into the public as a result of that. Lord knows that has been the case with uh, uh, past relationships with Kanye and Kim. Uh, but the thing is, like, Kanye is posting, like, really weird intimate details and texts that some people who are involved in all this obviously don't really want out there. Uh, but he seems insistent on sort of, like, forcing a pub, uh, like a public level of access to all of this that everybody may not really be into. And to me, that continues to like force uh, manipulations into the situation because like, hey, remember everything that you say and do in regards to me and splitting up with me in this relationship and our family is going to be subject to scrutiny in the public eye. So make sure that, you know, you do what people are going to like or else I'm going to post it for everyone to see and you're going to get so much negative reactions off of it and da, 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 da. It just seems like a really ugly manipulation because, you know, Kanye on his Instagram can frame anything to look like anything. And of course, like no matter what happens, Kanye is always going to frame himself uh, on his IG page as the victim, as somebody who is uh, being forced out of or uh, pushed out of a situation or pushed out of a place that he wants to be in due to some kind of like grand conspiracy or narrative where uh, Disney and Hillary Clinton are controlling Pete Davidson and da 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 da. He says, thank you guys for all your support of, of my family. My family means more to me than any other accomplishment. Uh, he's sort of uh, showing and thanking a lot of the people in his comments who have been uh, speaking very positively of him on his recent posts, giving them a little shout out. Uh, this is an image of a huge ass truck full of flowers that I guess Kanye had left at the front of Kim's uh, house. Which, um, you know, for anybody who is familiar with love bombing, which I, I encourage you to look it up if uh, you are unfamiliar with that term or what that is, this is very clearly cut an example of that. Um, you know, like uh, th this is even a little much for a relationship that's healthy, but it's even odder for a relationship that is that is clearly split. Um, and I, I guess it would be one thing if this came with an apology or some kind of agreement to, um, you know, again, come to uh, some sort of um, the word is lost on me one more time um, agreement or a, a compromise. But again, that's not really seeming like the case. Kanye doesn't really seem to be willing to accept anything. Maybe his fault there may have to do with him. Uh, in any way, it looks like a bribe. <laughs> oh my God! All right, now, now this is where things get really weird, and I think like very much overboard. And if Kanye had anybody on his side who was like, "Hey, you're kind of endangering the potential to actually get back with your family and actually like you know bring things to a positive end here," uh, it 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 would be this. So Kanye with, you know, an image of, uh, uh, I, I, I forget who this is. Is this Ving Rhames? I, I, I forget. I forget what the, the uh, actor's name here. Yeah, Ving Rhames. Yeah. Uh, Ving, Ving putting a, another dude in a headlock over here. Um, so <laughs> he's got bro in a headlock. And he says, upon my, my wife's request, please nobody do anything physical to Skeet. I'm going to handle the situation myself. And he has uh, uh, Kim's other phone text blasted up here. You're creating a dangerous and scary environment and someone will hurt Pete and this will all be your fault. Which, OK, I mean, I, I guess in one breath it is good that Kanye uh, asked that nobody else hurt Pete because, yeah, there, there probably are some Kanye fans that are crazy enough to hurt Pete Davidson. <laughs> There's probably a couple. But like saying that uh, <laughs> you're going to handle the situation yourself it isn't really much better is is actually not much better at all. Because, you know, if, if you sort of, you know, portray yourself as the threat instead, that makes it all the more likely that if all of this is real and on the up and up uh, and Kim decides to go to a court to get a restraining order and then shows the court this image and this post that 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 makes it likely that they will say, well, yeah, he does seem to be posing kind of like a threat here to, uh, you know, this new guy. Um, and if this new guy is around or if he is uh, acting erratically because he may be around, 
oh well you know that's that's not a situation that's that's not a domestic situation we can have lawfully um so this this is like not a great look again like as a child of divorce and as a child of a divorce scenario that was particularly ugly these are not the kind of statements this is not the kind of behavior that you want to be broadcasting out into the world because it doesn't exactly you know portray um a stable parental figure uh, and and i'll leave it at that uh moving on from there uh and, and this is particularly manipulative i don't really like this message um at all uh, saying, well, thank you. There are dangerous people out there and it is scary and it doesn't uh, have to be. I will always do everything to, uh, to protect you and our family forever. And I listened to you and told uh, everyone to make sure nothing physical happens to skeet. Uh, there was a more worrisome text that looked the same way. Yeah, here we go. Why can't you keep our conversations private? Because I got a text from my favorite person in the world. I'm your number one fan. Why wouldn't I tell everyone? Again, weird. This is too much. She is literally asking you to not put every fucking text back and forth that you're having on the Internet and you're doing it anyway. I'm your number one fan. Why wouldn't I tell everyone like Look, even as somebody who's on the Internet like 24 fucking seven, I don't want you motherfuckers to know every fucking thing that I do and think offline or just in general. Like that, that's not something, you know, I don't want to say normal. That's not something that people who have, you know, a healthy relationship with the Internet and their fans wants. You know, love you guys, but I want all of you at a distance. OK, <laughs> if you see me. Uh, like in, in person or something and uh, the pandemic numbers are better. Hey, you know what? You're fully invited to say hi and, you know, and, and everything uh, and, you know, uh, and, and be chill, be cool, you know, say hi. We can handshake. We can say what's up. It's totally cool. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, pushing you guys away or shitting you on or uh, shitting on you or everything or, or anything. Uh, but there are elements of my life, just as there would be elements of yours if you were in my position, that you don't want everybody to know. Uh, not even just because it's embarrassing, but because it's just private. It's your private everyday life. You know, the thing is, like, even inconspicuous things, when you know everybody knows them or understands them or they're being broadcast to everyone, th there, there becomes a certain weight. And, and a gravity to that in that moment. And you can't even feel like you're your own self in that moment because the entire world may sort of like see or be subject to the thing that you're saying or doing. You know, not to say that means that uh, you be fake in that situation, but the thing is not, not everything needs to be online. Not everybody needs to know everything. Some stuff should and can stay private, especially stuff in regards to conversations with another person who is asking you, why can't you keep these conversations private? That's manipulative. That's weird. That's toxic. And that's kind of fucking concerning. Uh, rolling it back over here a couple more times. Uh, we have Dear Page Six. I love my family. I love being at home with my kids. I'm not a bad man because I'm not a Democratic. Uh, I'm not Demo a Democratic <laughs> like 90 percent of black celebs. Uh, I love my wife. I love my children. I love God. I'm an artist. and I need to paint my children's future. Dear Page Six, I respect your profession, but I'm coming to get my family back. Uh, this is not a tirade. It's a prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Um, bro, look, this. uh <sighs> Everyone who's concerned about you in this situation and who doesn't like how the situation's playing out, we don't give a fuck that you don't like Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton's chance of being president is fucking over. I don't know if you noticed, but like Donald Trump's out of office. <clears throat> Joe Biden is president, for better or for worse. And, you know, maybe Trump will run again or some other Republican will beat him. Maybe Joe Biden will die and Kamala Harris will run or... Uh, maybe Bernie Sanders will, will uh, drink an anti-aging potion and uh, rewind the fucking clock back 30 years and he'll run for president with a big, you know, youthful vigor uh, to him. Who the fuck knows what's going to happen in the next few years as, as far as politics go? Uh, but like nobody gives a shit about whether or not you like Hillary Clinton or that you vote Democrat. Nobody gives a fuck. Like everyone thinks this behavior is weird because on the face it's weird. It has nothing to do with how you vote. Like nobody cares how you vote at this point. It, like it's not even presidentially speaking an election year. 
Like, I, I don't even know if Kanye cares about the, the congressional uh, elections that are going to be happening in November. He, pr- he probably doesn't care. He probably can't name a single senator. So who gives a shit? <laughs> like, no, no, nobody, nobody's even interested. <laughs> I don't even think I don't think I've ever even heard Kanye say the word Biden. So, I mean, you know, as, as, as far as I know, uh, K- Kanye hasn't really been paying that much attention to politics and Kanye's politics generally haven't been that much of a conversation. Uh, if anything, Kanye should be gearing up for the Kanye 2024 campaign. Uh, if, if we're being honest here, uh, we have Kanye shouting out um, a page over here that just, uh, I, I guess, didn't put a spin on the whole truck roses thing, which I mean, means to say that they just posted that it happened, I guess, which, uh, okay. Um, and then we have a, a little post over here where Judd Apatow is like clowning Kanye and his, you know, mask thing at the Super Bowl and so on and so forth. But like Kanye's response is like, this is what happens when you don't get the Hillary tattoo, which like, again, nobody is making fun of the fact that you wear weird masks everywhere because you didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. People are making fun of it because it, it's a little odd. Uh, th- now, this given is not the oddest one. I mean, there is that one that he did where it looked like kind of like a weird white guy's face. Which, <laughs> uh, I, I think you probably could have uh, voted for Bernie Sanders in the fucking primary and everybody still would have thought that was fucking weird. Um, so again, it's like, you know, pe- people do not think this behavior is odd because you didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. That's not, that's not why people are doing this. That's not why people are thinking this. Um, that's just, again, your weird delusion of the situation. And again, once again, this is another example of Kanye. He has to externalize everything people's perceptions of him that he sees are ne- that he sees as negative. Oh, this behavior is weird. Oh, this is too much. This is that. This is the other thing. It can't be because he's acting in a way that's generally we- that's genuinely weird. And look, like in some cases that can be cool. If you're an artist, if you're an eccentric and like, you know, uh people look at you doing something weird and they think you're weird, wear that as a badge of Yeah, I'm, I'm being weird on fucking purpose. <laughs> Like when Lady Gaga shows up to a fucking award show in a meat dress and people say, hey, that's kind of weird. Do you think that she thinks, oh, well, this is because I didn't vote for Hillary Clinton? <laughs> no, Lady Gaga is like, yeah, bitch, I'm trying to be weird. Like, you know, like if when people when people are true eccentrics are being eccentric to like get people to react to them. A lot of the time they just sort of like accept that as like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get your attention. I'm trying to do something odd so that you think I'm cool. You know, like and look, I don't even think Kanye wearing masks like this is bad. You know, it's it's not even like the oddest thing that he does. I mean, you know, sometimes I I think they look kind of cool. But the thing is, like, you know, nobody's kind of clowning them or having an opinion on them because uh, you didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. I mean, you know, if anything, hey, like uh, in a way you're kind of following covid restrictions. Everybody else isn't everybody else at the uh, (laughs) Super Bowl uh, probably not wearing a mask. Meanwhile, Kanye, he's all masked up. He's got everything covered, his eyes, his nose, his mouth, everything. He's extra COVID safe. Uh, There we have the the text that we uh, went through earlier. And uh, this is the last one that I want to end on for this stream, because honestly, I I, I feel like this is truly what it's all about. Kanye posting a visual for his upcoming album run, February 22nd, 2022. Uh, Going back into the burning house. And of course, like, you know, linked with this, uh, he has like the Ticketmaster website uh, announcement of ticket sales and so on and so forth. I I, I think like a lot of this is just to drum up interest in the tour, in the event, uh, in the album. See, here's the thing. We can take this multiple ways and none of it's good. Like it's either all real and it's all true and it's all serious and. Everything is really at stake here. And if that's the case, it's not a great look because like if all this is really going down with Pete and your family and this and that and the other thing, like this is not the behavior that's going to get anything back. This is not the behavior that's going to fix anything. This is not the behavior that is going to get anybody who has like any any real sort of like sense of self and agency back on your side. Anybody who wants to have control of their own lives and be an independent person 
is going to see this manipulative ass behavior and say, that's creepy. I don't want to have anything to do with this. Get this the fuck out of my life. This is toxic as fuck. Now, so there's that side of it. The other side of it is that maybe it's all fake. Maybe it's all for clout. Maybe it's all made up. Maybe it's all bullshit. And if that is the case, that's not all that great either, because I think at your core for Kanye to completely fabricate all of this and for even maybe other people in the midst of this rigmarole to be uh, playing a part in this fabrication means everybody is like really fucking deeply, disgustingly cynical to the point where they don't really care about how this is sort of like portraying Kanye, the family unit, children. There, there, there's, there's like a lot of stuff that to me, if this were all fake, would be so cynical that it, it, would, almost, it would almost be like uglier than if this were just sort of like Kanye not having full control of his mental health. Because still, at least in that scenario, you can believe that, well, you know, maybe because of his own actions, of course, but still, uh, he's just not fully in control of himself right now. This is not the real him. Maybe he could get to a better place in the future. But if everything is sort of just a manipulation, everything is just sort of like a pull of the puppet string and Kanye is willing and everybody else around him is willing to be as fucking fake as possible as, as they possibly can just to like rile up the audience and get them believing in a whole host of fucking stupid made up shit. Uh, again, that, that to me just sort of like reads as a level of cynicism that is, I, I, I don't, I don't know. It's like you, you really have to like kind of not really care about anything other than <laughs> yourself <laughs> and, and uh, squeezing whatever you can out of people uh, by fucking with them as much as possible, which I, I, I think is also ugly. And maybe it's a, it's a bit of column A and column B. Who the hell knows at this point? Uh, either way, it's not a great look. Either way, it's not a great look. Because again, like the former doesn't look great. And if it was the latter, believe me, it would not be my opinion that, oh, look at Kanye. He's, he's so Machiavellian. He's the master manipulator. He's just controlling the whole world. He's got uh, uh, just the whole, he's got everybody uh, sucking on his dick. He's got everything at the tip of his finger, blah, 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 blah. Like, no, I mean, I think that's actually kind of whack that you would, uh, you know, create such an ugly and hideous drama oriented around your family um, for clicks, you know? To me, that's like a weird, ugly, manipulative uh, YouTuber family vlogger behavior. But, you know, you're just, <laughs> you're, you're just a rapper who gets written about in the tabloids and you're kind of just doing it on a different level. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not very um, happy about this situation. I, I think it's quite cringe. I think it doesn't really look uh, too great on Kanye, honestly. And um, if, if this is all just, again, sort of a mental health thing on his part, I, I do have my fingers crossed and I do hope that he can, um, you know, reach a point where uh, he can find stability, uh, get better and, um, you know, just uh, create a family dynamic that's uh, good for him, good for Kim, good for the kids. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I mean, fingers crossed that uh, things level out for Kanye because I, I just don't feel like this meltdown that he's been engaging in over IG is, is the best uh, for him and uh, the fans and everybody involved. So I'm, I'm going to spend a little bit looking at a looking at chat right here. A slew of IG posts seems too genuine. I hope so, too. Zam. Yeah, the goat. No cap. High TND streams. Hey, yep, this is uh, going to be going up on that streams page. You got great music, but him as a person is just cringe. I, I think it depends on the situation. You know, Kanye can be cringe. Kanye can be funny. Kanye can be great. Kanye, I think, can be a lot of things. Uh, just, just like uh, everyone else, there's a little cringe in all of us. I think, uh, there's skeet working. Uh, there's a skeet lurking in every dirty ass alley waiting to help destroy your family. <laughs> hey, you know what? <sighs> Honestly, that, that, that may have been one of the more relatable lines. I think, I think all of us can think of a skeet Davidson in our own lives, just waiting there for the moment, uh, that we, uh, that we fuck up, that we tumble that we fall, just waiting to take advantage. You got to watch out for your own personal Skeet Davidson. Um, <laughs> moving on from there. Yay NFT soon. Yeah, maybe. You're the Skeet. You're the Skeet. Wow, that's that's quite the role to take. 
don't don't be be the ski. Don't be the skeeted. I think is probably the takeaway here. Don't be skeeted. Be the skeeter. I think is uh, uh, the advice that we <laughs> that we want here. Yay deleted all of his posts. Yeah, th- there's a lot here that he there's some here that he still has up, but a lot of it he has taken down. Um, uh, this is playing out like a bad TV show. I, I agree. I agree. Skeet or get skeeted. I agree. Uh, I want to be a scooter. Never be a, uh, never be a skeeter. Uh, da, 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 da. Yay, yay cleaned his, I, yay team cleaned his IG up. Yeah. I wonder if like, <laughs> if, if anybody's hacking Kanye's account or getting into Kanye's account, who's on his side or on his team, they're going on there to take things down, not put things up. <laughs> Again, the poster is like, my account's not hacked. This is me posting. Yeah, fucker. We know it's you posting. It's definitely you posting. Nobody's de- nobody's debating that. Um, oh, man. Uh, you're cool, Fantano. I'm not cool. I'm actually very not cool. Don't call me cool. I'm very, I'm very much not cool. Um, it's all removed as of 10 minutes ago. Well, here you go. I mean, this is this is pretty much what what I have. Um Skeet is hacking it. Skeet's hacking it to take it all down. I mean, look, if Kanye has actually taken all of this down and it stays down and he doesn't go into another tirade at Skeet or, you know, anybody else post this point, maybe he is uh, seeing the light a little bit and seeing that this is not going to lead to a good outcome. And if that is the case, that's good Um, because it's not going to lead to a good outcome. This is not going to lead to a good outcome uh, for anybody, honestly. Uh, not for Kanye, Kim, the kids, Skeet, nobody. This is not going to lead to a good outcome. This love bombing, this forcing yourself into the situation, this not compromising, this externalizing everything, it's not going to lead to a good outcome. And, you know, in a way, it may not even lead to a good album, okay? Because, uh, you know, considering how hectic the lead up to Donda was and how that album was very much like, you know, in progress uh, publicly, for a little bit is Donda two completely finished. Is it done? Is it not still being worked on? Does it still need attention that is being stolen away by this current drama and situation? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like a lot is kind of up in the air, especially with the lead up to this new record being so hectic. Um, the way he's acting for the past month, my hype for the album has died down so much. I mean, it may have at this point because, Hey, thank you very much for the sub. Because, you know, we, we the album's not here yet. We haven't heard it yet. But, like, you know, no doubt when this record drops, we're all going to be listening to it. We're all going to be listening to this fucking album <laughs> without a doubt. So, you know, while this kind of does steal away from the record's thunder a little bit, I, I do think at the end of the day, this is, like, all about this. Like, hey, look at my album coming out soon. Look at my McDonald's commercial appearance. Uh, it's, it's, it's all coming up Kanye. All right, well... Those are my thoughts on this. Not the best situation, not cute, not great, very cringe, very questionable, very strange. And uh, hopefully once more, Kanye can get back to a good place. You know, we've seen Kanye recently in very erratic places, and we've seen him in relatively, you know, good spirits and positive places where things seem to be going pretty well for him. And hopefully we can get back to a state of semi-equilibrium, I suppose. Uh, we're not pushing Pete over here. Do not push P. Do not push Pete over here. Do not push Skeet either. And uh, I hope everyone's doing well. I'm going to, uh, I think, head out uh, now that this is uh, all said and done. But listen, um, tomorrow we have an interview with the uh, the Great Beach House. 